We're Tony and Chelsea Northrup, and we're following up on yesterday's review of the Lightroom 6, Lightroom CC new features. We have spent the last day testing them out thoroughly, and we're coming back to you with results on what works and what doesn't. There's some of both in here. No beta. Right. This is the first Lightroom new release without a beta because it's a paid beta. Right. That means you get to pay to try out their beta software. Okay, they're not calling it a beta. That doesn't necessarily mean it's stable. Nothing is stable until it's gone through public. It's a little testing. Uh, and so this is our first beta. And that just means if you're a professional, if you're somebody who doesn't want to take any chances with your pictures, you might want to hold off until Lightroom 6.1 or the next update of CC. We found it to be stable. I haven't lost any pictures. Yeah, it's been a day. We'll see. But, right. Uh, first, I want to talk about the speed boost because this has been the headline for the new Lightroom features. Everybody's talking about the performance improvement because everybody wants Lightroom to be faster. Yes, but this doesn't seem to be fast where people want it. Uh, no, and in fact, uh, we tested every major feature of Lightroom, Lightroom 5 and Lightroom 6 on the same computers, timing it in a very scientific way, and we found absolutely no performance improvements whatsoever. Yeah. Now, what Lightroom says they've done is they've offloaded some things from the computer's main processor, the CPU, to the graphics processor, the GPU. The GPU is extremely good at performing simple mathematical calculations. It can do it just thousands of times faster than your CPU. So in theory, you can use this to speed things up. They do that in things like Premiere Pro. Here we have Lightroom 5 and Lightroom 6 CC. On the left, we have two tools. This tool, GPU-Z, shows the GPU load. This line right here shows the current graphic graphical processor utilization. Right now, close to zero. This is the task manager. You can see the CPU load, load here. Going into Lightroom 5, as I drag the exposure up and down, we can see the graphical utilization here is going up a little bit as it has to redraw the screen, but it's not going up much. So we jump over to Lightroom 6, and I do that. Watch that number up here. You'll see it spike up to 99%. No matter which of these sliders I drag, it seems to move it over to the GPU. So it is indeed making use of the GPU. However, there's no noticeable difference in the responsiveness of the tool for me. And this is the case even on lower end laptops. So I can say that it is true that they have integrated the GPU. They have changed the behind the scenes workings. However, there are no noticeable performance improvements as a result of that. Uh, now, this is a mid-range computer, not a high-end computer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a lot of memory or fast processor or a big GPU in it. Uh, and these are D810 raw files, so they're about as big as you can possibly get. Uh, I also say I process these same files in our little XPS 13 laptop, yeah. which is an older model. And I, I'm not on any computer as I've, have I ever thought that the sliders no, were I, slow. No, I've never noticed that, so I'd be... I'm... What is slow are converting to D&G, &G, right. painfully slow. Uh, when you're browsing through 100 files trying to find the ones that are sharpest or the best, yeah. there's that like half a second second lag between changing pictures that never yeah. seems to go away. This is all unchanged. Everything that, if you thought Lightroom was slow before, you'll still think Lightroom is slow. There are no noticeable performance improvements. I feel like we can safely dismiss Adobe's claims that they've improved the performance. Another big feature is Face facial recognition. recognition. That's what I've been seeing in all of the headlines. Everyone's excited about it. Yes. We got to try it out. There were some hits and there were some misses. I thought it was impressive in some ways. I thought that it was comically unimpressive in other ways. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of both. So first we'll show you what it does well. I'm switching to the grid view here and then you can click this face down here or press O to view all the faces. And you can see these are our vacation trips and uh, I've already tagged a couple of them here, um, and now it's taking the, the pictures that I have tagged and trying to associate some of these other pictures. Uh, so these are all pictures of Madeline, and for some reason, well, okay, it's saying Madeline with a question mark, and I can click the check mark here to go ahead and tag her face, um, Tony with a question mark. Now, some of these pictures are nice and clear. Some of them, she's maybe in the background. Mm -hmm. It's out of focus. Um, but it didn't get all of these. Uh, nonetheless, it's fairly easy to fix them. Click and shift click to select the range and then type her name. Um, I, as you add more pictures, it seems to pick up more pictures. But I wouldn't go so far as to say it's intelligently learning, learning it. Uh, on my desktop computer, I've 
you know, more than 100,000 pictures, and I've been adding in dozens and dozens of people and names, and I'm finding that uh, the actual recognition is, is probably 20 to 30 percent out of a large set of pictures. Okay. These vacation pictures we had loaded only uh, like 130 pictures with really only two faces because it was taken with your camera. Right. Uh, and it did a decent job, kind of best case scenario. But that's how a lot of people will be using it. That's true, but it's pretty hard to not get the right faces when there's only two. Right. So that kind of skews the results. I feel like your bigger, you know, pool of photos to choose from. Would it's have certainly more. a more strenuous test. Yeah. But for people who are importing their pictures from vacation and you just want to tag the people in your family, this will help you do it. Now, it only actually recognizes about three out of four faces. So if somebody is in profile, it doesn't seem to recognize mm -hmm. them. If they have sunglasses on, it will miss them about half the time. And then sometimes there'll be just a full regular face in the picture that it just doesn't pick up. So you can pro use this technique and manually pick up the faces that it does not pick up. Uh, and you'll still need to go back and probably pick up about another quarter of the pictures. Okay. Now, on my desktop computer, with those 100,000 pictures, uh, I had pictures of a friend's daughter named Amy, who at the time was like a nine-year-old girl, fair-skinned, dirty hair. blonde hair. Yeah. And... Uh, I thought Amy was our nephew Tyler. Yep, there's Ty. A, a middle-aged white man. Yeah, with absolutely no hair. Our friend who has dark brown hair and brown skin. Yep. And then so, this guy behind a net. <laughs> and then, yep, another middle-aged man with a goatee. And quite a few other people, too, that aren't in the screenshot. And as you go through Amy. its suggestions, you'll see there's literally like a thousand different Madeline suggestions who yeah. are just random people because I take pictures at soccer games. So there'll be people in the audience who are out of focus and kids on opposing teams and just like a thousand faces, not Madeline, where it'll say Madeline, Madeline, Madeline. <laughs> Malkovich, Malkovich? Yeah. And then, again, thousands and thousands of instances of her face where it doesn't recognize her at all. So I, I can't imagine going through my existing library and manually tagging all those things. It did not do a good job of automatically but recognizing them. a good feature if you're just tagging your photos now as you're importing your new photos. Yeah. If you were going to tag them anyway, yeah. the faces and, and the recognition system will definitely make it faster. Okay. But I agree with it's probably not what you hoped it would be. It's not necessarily what the marketing made it sound like it would be. It can very slightly improve the workflow. You might not have the patience to do it anyway. That wouldn't be like exciting though if that's how they marketed it. Yes. <laughs> this could very slightly change your workflow. <laughs> One of the features that we really liked was the HDR. So it takes just a bunch of different exposures and it combines them, makes sure each part of the photo is exposed the best that it could be based on those different exposures. And we got really good results with it. Yeah, if you're already shooting raw, you might be getting 12 or 14 stops of the dynamic range, the difference between the darkest parts of the recorded picture and the brightest parts. Right. Uh, the typical picture will only show eight or nine stops, and the rest is uh, overexposed highlights that you could recover yeah. in Lightroom, or underexposed shadows that you could raise to expose extra detail. And, and we love using those sliders when we work with raw files. Well, if you bracket your shots, uh, taking a regular exposed shot, an underexposed shot, and an overexposed shot, Lightroom will combine those and basically extend the dynamic range of your camera. And yeah, like you said, we found it works really well. That picture was not, did not use the Lightroom no. technology. And in fact, we should make the point, the, when people think of the term HDR, they think of pictures like this. More over-processed, like artistic HDR, and this isn't that it's it's natural it looks very natural yeah well for better or worse it's actually because it's lacking a particular feature the feature that highlights local contrast like this that makes that extra clarity is called tone, tone mapping. mapping and uh, Lightroom's HDR does not have tone mapping it will only be extending the dynamic range it's a very practical but limited form of HDR mm -hmm. so you can use it to reduce the shadow noise and to improve the dynamic range of your camera so if you want to get pictures from your Canon that have as much dynamic range as those Nikon and Sony cameras, bracket your shots and then process them in HDR. 
We've been able to do this with external applications, but the ability to do it with just a couple of clicks in Lightroom That's nice. is really nice. And, uh, and it, it happens pretty quickly. It seems pretty fast. Also, actually. isn't it an important distinction that when you do it in Lightroom, the combined files are still a DNG, so it's still raw? Yes, you still have all your raw data in yeah. there, so it's, it's pretty lossless. You're not actually losing anything if you were to go out to Photomatix Pro or something. It would need to process it, and then it would come back to you as a TIFF file. Right. So I do think it's terribly useful. I also want to say that usually when you use that exposure slider, you have you can go from minus four to plus four. When you process a raw file, you can go from minus ten to plus Ooh. ten. So you really can go over a much broader range and uh, recapture a lot of detail. We have a full tutorial coming on how to use HDR. Also, quick tip. You'll make a picture and then it can take a little bit to process and you might go on to look at another picture. It can be hard to find the HDR picture you just made. Yes, that search, was a problem. Yeah, search in the grid for, use text to search for HDR. It adds HDR to the file name. Oh, that's nice. So it'll pop up, yeah. I had that problem using Photomatic sometimes. It would just get lost. Yeah, sometimes when they get imported back, you don't know exactly what happens to it. We had similar results with the panorama feature. Uh, it's Nothing shocking. It's kind of an old feature. We've been using other apps for a long time and they've worked well. This also works well. Yeah. It's basically the panorama feature from Photoshop, but because it's integrated into Lightroom, it can work with those raw files, keep those raw files, and keep all of your data. It works wonderfully. We didn't notice any odd edges, and I processed uh, eight or nine different panoramas, taken with different cameras, taken in different environments, and uh, they all worked as I would have hoped. And uh, so overall, we're really happy with those. We'll come have a tutorial coming for the panorama too. It Same tags, thing, pano. Yeah, not panorama, but just these four letters, pano. You'll be able to find the picture. Useful tip. That about wraps it up. Uh, Chelsea, why don't you throw in a quick book a plug for the next edition of our Lightroom? Yeah, book. we'll be updating our Lightroom book, Lightroom Five. It's going to be Lightroom Six CC. It's for pre-sale right now. Uh, the ebook is normally nine ninety nine, but the pre-sale price is what like eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine, and the paperback is nineteen ninety nine normally, but you can get five dollars off if you have our Lightroom Five book that comes with two hundred and fifty presets, over fourteen hours of video. We're working on it now. Yes, and if you sign up for the pre-order, you'll get access to the new chapters and new videos as we record them. So they'll be starting in just a couple of weeks. We'll have information mm -hmm. rolling out to you, and then it will be shipping very soon. Order the paperback now, and it's your only chance to get an autographed copy. We only autograph the pre-sale orders. Get it all at stp.io. I draw special LR6. pictures, too. Sometimes Chelsea will draw a picture for you. You can't promise that. People are going to be mad when they don't get a picture on everybody. I like to draw weird pictures. Oh, man. You're going to get a lot of people who want weird pictures. They're going to get them. I'll do it for two days. Weird pictures. <laughs> uh, you can buy it buy the pre-orders only directly from us. But if you want reviews, go to Amazon. Check out the reviews of the Lightroom Five book. There, you'll see people just love it. They're stellar. Any questions? Let us know. Thanks. Thank you.